This is Twit. My app, so I went on a backpacking trip this last week. You weekend. did? How did it go? It was amazing for a number of reasons. Um, I had never done that before, and it was, you know, beautiful and uh, and dangerous at times, and it was it was awesome. Like was I, nice. I have to say, I had a blast. Um, but while I was there, I was with uh, one of my friends uh, is in the solar industry, and we had this amazing uh, spot, this amazing campsite right on a lake. It was like this little peninsula out in in a lake, and we wanted to know where the sun was. Well, we the sun was going to set behind us, but we wanted to know where the moon was going to rise because we knew it was going to be a full moon and we wanted to check it out. And so he used an app called Sun Surveyor. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah. Just it was kind of like that, actually. <laughs> uh, he used an app called Sun Surveyor, which I guess in the uh, solar industry is really useful for finding the the path of the sun to know how it's going to hit solar on, on roofs and all this kind of stuff. But uh, it's just a really cool visualization that allows you to, uh, it has a number of different modes, which I'll walk through in a second, but it just really allows you to predict the sun, predict the moon, predict um, the the pattern, like the what's happening with the Milky Way. It's just a really good visualization. So this is the um, this is the 3D compass mode, right? Yeah, this is the 3D compass mode. Uh, they always recommend to do the figure eight to kind of calibrate before you use it. Um, I'm assuming it's going to work for for this uh, you know this demonstration, but. Um, so right now I'm facing east, right? And the sun would be setting behind me if I was standing outside. Uh, essentially, it would be right behind me. And it's not quite set. You can see kind of down here, the sunrise, 629 a.m., sunset, 757. There's other details down here which I don't understand completely, but they have to do with kind of the shadows that they cast at these particular angles, which can be really good for photographers. You've got a little time machine down here, so you can go back in time and find where the sun and the moon were at any given time. Uh, if I swipe over here, I've got access to the moon chart, which I can turn off and uh, turn on as, as need be basically play around with that. And then yeah, there's dawn and dusk. Uh, some of these things I, I will fully admit I don't completely understand, but you've got a lot of, of stuff to play with here uh, as far as that's concerned. And so it became really useful. Like I was like, God, I wonder where, you know, what, what, where are we facing? Where is the, where's the moon going to come up? And he just pulled up with this app and he's like, well, it's going to go there. This is going to be its path. And he just like, basically drew it in the sky. And it was just kind of really neat to see that. Um, you can go into map mode, map overlays the oh. sun and, uh, and the moon on top of a satellite map. Um, so let's see here. Let's try and go. So I'm going to go ahead and track current location. Here's where we are. If I was standing outside, you know, I'm facing away from Twit, I could see the sun, you know, setting uh, to my mm -hmm. right, essentially. And this becomes useful because then you can kind of see like where buildings might get in the way. If you were waiting for a particular type of light, you could see the path of the sun and be able to predict how that building's going to get away, get in the way at <clears throat> at this time, or that tree's going to create a shadow, or or you know, and you could imagine why that's useful in solar. You want to mm -hmm. know the path of the sun, how long it's going to be in direct contact with the solar panels, that sort of stuff. It also has a live view. This is like an AR mode. So when you go outside, you can do the pass through camera, and you can. And this was this was one of the modes that he used to really determine, you know, to basically like look at the mountains, be like the moon. The moon's going to come up mm -hmm. over there. And it was just kind of really neat to, to see that. And again, you can kind of go forward or back in time or, or come right to live. And it's hard to show in AR mode because it's out of the screen, but you can see kind of the path of everything. When you're outside, it makes and a lot more sense. the sun is behind us um, where we are right now. It's yeah. setting behind us, right? Um, hard for me. Here, I'm going to... I only say that because when I leave here, the sun is in my rear view mirror <laughs> when I come yeah. here. No, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. It's hard for me to show that, but yes. Um, and then let's see here. We've also got the ephemeris, which is just basically lots of um, predictive data um, on, you know, when the golden hour is going to be 629 a.m. Sorry, I'll pull this down. 629 to 726 a.m. in the morning and in the evening, 7 to 8-ish, to right around there, uh, when twilight is and all of these different times as far as when these things hit, uh, but also the moon, the Milky Way photo opportunities this is kind of interesting this is like a list of different um different events out in space that would be worth 
like waiting for and, and doing a, a long exposure of or, shot. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, Milky Way visibility and all that kind of stuff. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in there uh, that you can track. And then finally, Street View, which integrates with Google Map Data. Of course, it sees us in Twit right now, which is the old studio. So this is weird. It's not quite working the way it is when I'm normally outside. Wow. It's triangulated the fact that I'm at Twit and pulling in Twit information from Google. So this is wrong. But what it normally does is it pulls in like actual Street View data and allows you to uh, basically like see like, oh, that building's going to be behind the sun or in front of the sun or this is the path of the sun or the moon or whatever. So um, yeah, it's good for photographers, real estate agents, uh, gardeners, like it can come in handy in a lot of different ways. And I just think it's a really great visualization tool. Um, and like I said, we used it on our trip to predict when the moon would rise. I ended up getting this photo. Wow. Wow. With, with the pixel. Awesome. With the pixel, by the way. So, I mean, it was, you know, bef right before the moon started appearing there, it was pitch black. Like, we had a st sky full of stars. And I had my, my phone set up and ready. On and, a tripod? Uh, no, <laughs> perched on rocks. Nice. Yep. A, 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 nature's a, tripod. Nature's <laughs> tripod, exactly. Uh, and I had it pointed there, just kind of trusting that's where it was going to be. And sure enough, I got, you know, this and a number of other shots. So wow, I would say this is the best one. Sight. Yeah, that's with Nightside. Dang Google. Um, and it, yeah, so I was that's super, amazing. super that's happy great. with it. Um, and I, yeah, so anyways, it's a cool app. It's called Sun Surveyor. There is a light version, um, which has limited functionality. The sh version that I showed you is the paid version. That's seven ninety nine. So it's a little, a little on the pricier side for apps, but it's I think it's designed incredibly well and it's super useful uh, for a number of reasons. So. Uh, check it out. Sun Surveyor, Sun and Moon in the Play Store.